once you associate the Siemens Cypress IP bundle to the Socrates IP catalog, double click on the Siemens Cypress version that you've just associated. This will bring up to create a new CMN mesh configuration wizard where you can choose from two options to create your own CMN Cypress mesh. Option 1 you can use an existing topology YAML file to create the CMN Cypress component. With this option you'll be able to reuse previous mesh configuration to make changes or to use it in a different project. Option 2 you can also use example mesh topology provided by the IP bundle or you can create a blank 3x3 mesh that you can configure from scratch. In the next page, choose the project that you want your component to be created and its suffix, then click finish. When you create a new CMN Cypress component, the Interconnect Architect application is launched automatically from the tool. There's a tooling page for each stage of the configuration process. These pages are laid out from left to right across the top of the tool. At the far right of the header, there is a docs link. Clicking it, it will open the documentation for Interconnect Architect in a separate window. The first configuration page is Mesh. We will use this page to update the mesh dimensions and clock, DN, and DTC domains. Under the Mesh Dimensions tab at the top of the screen, select the desired X and Y dimensions using the respective drop-down menus. Be sure to click the Update button for the changes to take effect. Under the Domains tab, there are three sub-tabs, Clock, DN, and DTC. Each of the sub-tabs work in the same way. There's a drop-down for each cross point in the mesh. Select the desired domain for each. To set multiple cross point domains at once, click and drag to select multiple drop downs. The selected cross points will have a blue border. At this point, new drop down will appear at the bottom of the screen. Using this drop down, select the desired domain. The next page is Global Configuration page. Use this page to set the global configuration parameters and to specify project-wide default values. The global configuration parameters are on the left-hand side of the page and the project default values for each device are on the right-hand side. To update a parameter, enter the desired value directly or choose from the respective drop-down list. Each parameter has a tooltip which shows useful information about the parameter, for example, its range, its default value, or a brief description. Node configuration page. Device groups are used to group devices that are connected to a cross-point port. A group may have one to four devices. A group with more than one device uses CAL to connect all the devices to a single cross-point port. Each device group can have zero or more members. If the parameter of a device in one group member changes, then all the group members are updated. If the user wants to have a different parameters, they will need to create a new device group. To add a device group, click the yellow Add Group button at the top of the screen. A model appears where you need to enter a name for the group and select instances to be included in the group. First, enter the group name. Click the green plus button next to the add instance if more than one instance is required. An appropriate CAL will be selected automatically as needed. See the tooltip at the top of the model for more details on the valid group configurations. Once the valid group is defined, click next. Here the user defines how many group members to create and any instance attributes applicable to the group. The user can also choose which port to assign each group member to.
Once the attributes are configured, we go to the next page. Here the user can update the device parameters for whichever instance are part of the group. Key thing to note here is these parameters will be set to the defaults in the global configuration page under device parameters. Click finish to complete the creation of the group and its members. To edit group's attributes, click the pencil icon in the edit column. To edit group's device parameters, click on the cog icon in the parameters column. And to delete the group, click the trash icon in the delete column. To add a group member, click on the green plus button next to the add group member. A model will appear where the user will select which cross point and port to connect the group member to. To edit which part of the group member is connected to, click on the pencil icon in the edit column of the group members table. Likewise, to delete the group member, click the trash icon in the delete column. To expand or collapse a group view or hide its group members respectively, click the green arrow on the left hand side of the group row. On the top left corner, we have the Canvas Tools section. This section will enable user to manipulate the mesh and select unit for inspections and edits. We have two options here. One option is pointer and other one is the pan option. The pointer option enables you to select any component on the canvas and pan option enables you to pan the canvas. This can also be achieved by using the mouse wheel, click and drag. Under the Canvas Tools section, we have the Setup section. Use this form to configure the mesh dimensions. To do so, input the desired values and click Update in each section. In the middle, we have the Floor Plan. The Floor Plan shows the logical layout of the mesh. Zoom in out, use the scroll wheel, and to pan, click and hold the scroll wheel and drag. On the right hand side, we have the Side Panel. It is expanded by the clicking on the icon on the top right of the screen. When the side panel is expanded, its icon changes to X. Clicking it will collapse the side panel. You can expand and collapse all the CALs, toggle all the text displayed, and view the main. Each individual CAL can be expanded and collapsed by clicking on it in the floor panel as well. In the middle of the side panel, we have the property editor. When you select a cross point or mesh credit slice or MCS on the floor plan using the pointer tool, its corresponding property editor is opened. The editor shows all the attributes of the instance. To update the instance attribute, enter the desired values and click update. Each attribute type is shown in its own accordion pane. Click on the pane header to expand or collapse it. In the test and report section, on the left hand side, the user is provided with a list of scripts to generate reports based on the current design configuration. The user selects the desired list from the drop down list and then clicks run. Then the script is run and the output is printed below. The rest of the test and report page is dedicated to view logger file output. The user selects the desired log file to view from the drop-down at the top of the section and the corresponding output is displayed below. Socrates has a powerful framework to check the configured component, and it's called Design Rule Checks. The PRC engine checks the coherency of design data. It contains several sets of built-in checks that you can run against your configuration. You can run the DRCs after you define your configuration or during your validation of the project. The design rule check can never be turned off, and it can ensure your design is always correct by construction. 
Once the design is passing all the TRC tests, it is ready to be used to generate the RTL. This page provides the user with the information of the build path and the button to generate the RTL. To generate the RTL, user clicks the Generate the RTL button and waits for the results. The status of the build is displayed in the button after the run is complete. 